at one more stop. I'll see you in a little while. All right. The idea is to let these older people stay in their homes as long as they possibly can. I do the things that I feel that they can't do. I take them to the store, come in, take them to the drugstore, doctor, wherever they might have to go. You have to realize these people have worked all their lives, built this home, and then might have to get out because they can't be in there by themselves. But sometimes their relatives might work and they can't be with them, and that's where the senior companion comes in. And we give a break to those families who have to look after their older people full time. She can help me do all these things that makes me feel better. There are 33 million older people in America, and that number will more than double in the next two decades. Some of us will need help to live fuller, independent lives. And some of us can be that help. Senior companions are a caring hand when you need it most. Oh, it makes a great difference. It keeps the senior companion as well as the client active. It makes the client feel as if they're not isolated. It prevents premature institutionalization. But for the senior companion, it allows them to help someone else, someone else who could be them in a few years. One of my clients, uh, he, didn't, he didn't talk, he didn't move. And I didn't know how aware he was because his eyes didn't say anything either. So this day, I just noticed the hair on his face and I started to shave him. And he was a little tight, tense, because he thought I was going to hurt him. But I knew I was doing it because I had been a barber, too. When I came back the next day, he looked at me and it, he, he really recognized me. I saw, the, saw some life in his eyes for once. And he said, thank you. He didn't say it, I was like a hit. I could hear it in his throat. Thank you, you know? And that, that really touched me. Uh, then I knew what, that I was really doing something, and uh, it, it sort of hooked me then. <laughs> Here's your glass of water, dear. Wet your whistle. Thank you. How you been? Huh? I have a little How client that uh, she is, her left arm is useless due to the fact of a brain aneurysm and a stroke, and she always made a lot of quilts. So I am her left hand when she wants to sew on the machine and get these quilts going. And it's amazing what that lady can do with one hand. The first time I came to meet Ramon, first of all, I couldn't find his apartment. I thought I'd walk for an hour before I found him. And then he says, let's go for a little walk. And we started walking and walking and walking, and we took him across the street, and then we go into Fashion Valley, and I thought, well, it's Fashion Valley and come back home again. No way, he goes clear out the other end. We're walking for about two hours, then he says, how about some coffee? I said, okay, now I know it's gonna be two hours coming back again. Well, we got home and he was fine, because his doctor tells him he's gotta keep walking. I volunteered because I can do it. I'm 72, but I'm, I can still get around. I'm very mobile, and I, I, I'm, I got all my senses. My a lot of these people don't. Like he wants to get up and down the steps, for example. He needs somebody to hold his hand to do it because he's not that steady on his legs. You never know when you need a friend. Let's put it that way. What I like best about this is getting involved in a program that's important, something that needs to be done. But I think they should send. I've got so much in all my life. I've gotten so much from life, and I think I can get back a little bit now for a few more years until however long I last. <laughs> <laughs> you have to want to give, and giving is volunteering. I try to do it because I know my mother's 89 years old, and somebody might have to help her, and I'm going to get older, and I would want somebody to help me like I'm helping these people. The senior program was designed to keep clients independent rather than have them winding up in some senior home or something like this. I think it's worth every nickel of it because uh, there's a lot of people like him who need it. And there's a lot of people like me who can do it. So why not? See y'all later.
it's very exciting to think that you're changing the world. If we don't do it, it's not going to be done. I've got so much in all my life. I've gotten so much from life, and I think I can give back a little bit now for a few more years until however long I live. <laughs> Today's seniors are a vital, vibrant solution to the difficult problems our country faces. There are 33 million older people in America, more than ever before, and there will be twice as many by the time our grandchildren grow up. We are strong and independent, with the wisdom to change things, like helping tutor the millions of people who cannot read, helping feed those who go to bed hungry, and helping children learn so they're ready to succeed in this world. The world can be hard, but we can make it better. We can give. We can inspire. We can lead. We can truly make a difference. My kids were little and I was little. We had uh, grandparents and aunts and uncles and everything around, but the kids nowadays don't have that. That's right. Being a foster grandparent helps me to pass on to future generation the joy of reading. I don't know, some kind of magical, mystical intuition that a grandparent has, they can just tune in immediately on a child's need. And our children have multiple needs. Grandparents just somehow have a way of understanding that child's need, talking to them, and making them feel good about themselves. I, I don't know how they do it. We're here to give a lot of nurturing. We're here to give a lot of advice. We're here, we have a shoulder for them to listen to, to lean on when they need us. You know, no one is immune to a personal problem. Sometimes, even you, you can't, when you're a little girl, you couldn't talk to your parents. And this is where grandma comes in. So what I'm doing now, I'm giving back. I'm trying to give back, to pay back for some of the things that society's done for me. senior person usually who visits other seniors although the one that's visiting is a little more mobile he gets around the other ones don't the other ones are generally housebound pretty much and they don't get out to meet people they don't get out to have some human contact so we go and visit them maybe once or twice a week for a few hours and just talk ordinary chatting take them shopping if necessary or help them sh uh, pick up their medications from the drugstore or something like that we also keep an eye on whether or not they're taking their medications and how their general well-being is, how their emotional and physical well-being. And uh, it's the simplest job in the world. It's just being a friend to somebody is what it amounts to, essentially. Well, it's hard to decide who gets the most out of it. It keeps the senior companion, as well as the client, active. It makes the client feel as if they're not isolated. It prevents premature institutionalization. But for the senior companion, it allows them to help someone else, someone else who could be them in a few years. I try to do it because I know my mother's 89 years old and somebody might have to help her. And when, uh, well, I'm getting up in age and I don't believe in telling people how young I am, but uh, I'm, I'm gonna get older and I would want somebody to help me. 
like I'm helping these people. Senior Volunteer Program, which is called RSVP, is a program for seniors 55 and over. The idea actually when it was first formed was that retired folks have so much interest and maturity and experience to give back. When RSVP called me up, I answered the call and I was the best day of my life because I just begin a new life, I'm getting younger and younger. Without the resources of, of the wisdom that seniors have in our communities, many things wouldn't operate at all. The senior volunteers with RSVP give so much back. The value of that resource is just beyond measure. We work with schools, tutoring, hospitals, libraries. It's working with homeless people, working with police departments, crisis clinics, just all over. Last year we delivered 521 tons of food. Without the volunteers it would just, um, you know, dry up and fall off and, and uh, be a waste. That's it. You're heavy, huh? Yeah, we do. Okay. Thanks a lot. Well, we're basically eyes and ears for the deputies. We uh, patrol the neighborhoods uh, throughout the county area here every day. And if we see some uh, problems, we get on our radios and report it. Mark with one kid at a time. <laughs> I'm making my mark. Estoy dejando una marca. I'm making my mark. I am making my mark. I'm making my mark. I'm making my mark. Senior volunteers, we are part of the solution. 